Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is another episode of 10 for the Developers. Um, I'm associate writer Adam Weiser, and here to thank you, uh, all the subscribers, for being able to make this show possible for, for both myself and Omar Aweda to take some time out and answer a few of your questions from the forum. So, uh, yeah, why don't we just jump into it? Um, Omar, take us so away. Sounds good, man. Nice intro. Thank you all. All right, so I have a few questions regarding characters, and then you're going to be taking over some of the lore, I believe. Yes, yeah, so we've got we've got questions that kind of uh, some of them bridge both worlds, and others will just uh, he'll he'll take the lead on, and uh, I'll take the lead on more ones. So anytime we can integrate, it'd be great. Sounds good. So this question is from Armored Citizen and Chad the Geek. Uh, they're talking about uh, what kind of like NPCs are we going to find around Art Corp, and what can what will they look like, and should we expect like a few clones, perhaps with different clothing, or will they all look unique? Um, so that's a great question. Um, and then Chad the Geek was talking about uh, procedural generation for characters. So really how the characters work is the fact that we have a, a, a set of scan actors, and that uh, every head that we get, or every person that we get, you know, requires quite a bit of work. So that's something that will continuously build. So as we might release, uh, 10, 12, 15, whatever, uh, that will always grow. So maybe in you know, a few years, that pool of characters to pull from will be larger. So I think in the very beginning, we're obviously going to have to reuse assets because we don't have necessarily a character, if there's going to be a giant city of 1,000 people, that would be uh, 1,000 unique heads. So there will definitely be some physical assets being reused. But in the sense of will they look like clones, I think the variety of clothing that we have and uh, the color and the style and then the hairstyles that go on top of that and then the eye color and then the voices. I think when that's all put together to create uh, a series of characters and you know, a lot with the manufacturers that you guys have developed and what kind of, what kind of clothes people wear in certain locations, all that kind of stuff, I don't feel, I don't, well, I'm pretty confident that it will not feel like this person over here is just that person over there with a different shirt. I think that it's going to look um, much more different than that. So no, I don't think there's going to be clothes. And then on top of that, we're looking into some technology that we could use and some techniques that we'd be able to, to actually like customize your faces and like the shape of it. And, and this is, that's something that's also like uh, very difficult to do, but that is a goal that we're, we're shooting for is like a, an actual, like instead of just picking a head, or picking a person or a character, you would be customizing that and building it for yourself, for your experience. Um, but that is something that's like growing that we might introduce uh, over uh, a period of time. But as of right now, we're still trying to figure out how we want to do that and the actual control of that. So procedural generation, um, maybe we could write some code or some code will be written to populate the planets and to take assets that they're properly categorized in the right folders and mix and match together. Um, but as of right now, we have enough uh, people where we can kind of create those assets by hand and then uh, place them because it's actually really quick with the new item port system that uh, people are working on. It's going to not be a, not, it's not a giant task to start populating the world with uh, unique characters. And, th and that, that all sounds great because from, from a lore perspective, from a strictly lore perspective, clones are going to be a no-go in the game just because, mm -hmm. um, you know, so it, it, it'd, it'd be really great to, to have that integrated and to have the clothing and, and other, other ways of being able to make it feel like very, a very diverse uh, landing zone or location that you're visiting. Um, and the clone thing is, is, is simply just, it's, it's not in the realm of uh, the kind of universe Chris wants to create. He wants to keep things, um, you know, again, realistic, um, but uh, they also need to be fun. And it's, uh, it, it's a, it, you know, I, I, he thinks it's a little bit more interesting when it's more like players or the stories, humans on humans, and then the alien race is there. Otherwise, if we had clones that were so, such perfect replicants of ourselves, why would we be fighting the Van Duel when we could just make an army of clones and send them off to go fight our wars? I mean, that when has that amazing. ever gone bad, right? When, I, I don't think that's ever gone bad, so. But, um, That's a great idea. Yeah, Attack of the Clones. Well, well, I don't know if we can use that. Is that know. copyright? Are we allowed to even say that? I just Are we going to get sued? I don't know. We're going to find out. Oh, God. So, um, all right. Uh, again, my name's Omar. <laughs> so you're going to sue me. <laughs> 
Why don't hey, you man. take the next one? From Aragorn BH, who asked, will NPCs notice if you are wearing clothes that are significantly lower or higher or, or higher on the socio-economic ladder than they are? What if the clothing styles comes from different star systems? Or could this affect mis uh, missions or business deals uh, we might have with them? Um, so to, to loop back into that, um, yeah, we've actually already started to break down from a, from a lore perspective um, many different varieties of clothes. I'm sure you've heard of this mentioned before. Stuff like um, uh, Earth Blue Collar, Terra Fashion Casual, uh, Frontier um, Fashion, um, stuff like that. So we have all these different companies and all these different uh, kind of looks that uh, we'll be able to, to give characters in certain areas. So you'll be able to be walking around Terra and see people in very kind of like sleek, uh, futuristic looking clothes with kind of very clean, simple lines. And then right next to them, you may see somebody in a leather duster uh, with, uh, with kind of like boots and straps and stuff like that, which would definitely fall into more of the uh, frontier fashion uh, type, uh, type category. So I think uh, that'll be a way to kind of like help the, the different landing zones, the place you visit, feel even more diverse just based on the clothes, uh, the wear on that clothes, and everything like that, uh, as you were mentioning before. Now, when it comes to the mission simple, uh, system, uh, from, from what I believe, and again, I, I, I got to caveat this, that I, I'm not 100% sure on this, um, it, it, we would like um, the way you present yourself uh, as an outer way to be something that NPCs can respond to. You know, if they don't, if they don't like the fact that you walk into their bar in like this sharp, like three-piece suit, um, they, that bartender may not give you a certain mission. Even if, even if you may be a criminal or do some pirate activities just based on the look of you, um, they may not be able to do that. And I know one of the goals is to, to make it so that NPCs aren't necessarily um, omniscient as to, to all your actions. And that's one of the way to do that is by providing a variety of clothing and clothing styles. Then uh, that becomes a very simple way that you're telling the world how you want that world to respond back to you. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. I think from, uh, from a design perspective, uh, I really can't, uh, from a game design perspective, I don't know exactly how that works, but what we are doing is we are planning for some of that uh, kind of like different styles, other jackets, trench coats, that kind of thing, and also make sure that they match so you don't just look ridiculous because then everyone's going to, it's going to be like, you know, Christmas hats and green slippers and stuff. So we do really try to stay within the manufacturer and find a nice style for that manufacturer and then uh, make sure that we provide you know, a color palette that works really well with that and where that is. So how the NPCs and stuff interact with that or the AI interacts with that, I, I really don't know as of right now. Um, but if, I mean, you guys are looking into it as well as some yeah, of the like a lot of these things game designers. We, yeah, we, we set this in place so that the, the designers can pick it up and, and kind of run with it. But for us being able to be so specific, uh, we'll, we'll help that and kind of give that diversity. Next one. Oh, I have one. I have one that I want to address too, uh, and I think it was talked about last week. Um, it's by Banco or Bagno of War and Kenzie Snow. Kenzie Snow. How are the females coming? Well, this has been uh, quite an interesting uh, topic because what we're trying to do is we're obviously going to make female characters. But the hardest part right now is trying to figure out what is the best way to take all of these assets that we're doing for all the males and then bring them down to females. Can we move uh, low poly geometry back around the female characters and will that suffice or do we need to have a re-sculpt of everything? And like, There's just so, so, so much that we need to create. So what we're essentially just trying to do is what is the best use of techniques that uh, that we can use to address the problem. The problem is clothing all these females. Um, we can go in one way, which is like manpower, and actually go in, sculpt all the variations of clothes, uh, which we might have to do. And then there's other things, well, maybe they can share boots, and then we're going through and there's uh, so many pieces that we're like, okay, well, we can share hats, if we scale the hats down. All right, now what about hair? What about this? What about that? And then if we find a way to really nail down the male and then find out all the parts that uh, comprise a, a male character, uh, which, which we already have, then we could use that immediately 
and go say, okay, so this worked for this character, now let's go to the female character. So it's not necessarily the fact that like, oh, we're not making female characters. It's just a fact of, well, once we find a way that works and is like, this is 100% the way we want to go, then it'll trickle down to every other character in the entire game, even alien races, talking about like armor classes, you know, and this kind of stuff. Because we're all still figuring out what's the best way performance-wise. We have to figure out uh, how all these people are going to share these things, how many gigs is the game going to be, like these kind of things that we're taking into consideration. And the more things that we can share, uh, the better. So really it's just a fact of uh, we're looking into the best way to make the females uh, use the most out of what we've already made and bring them to you in the best way possible rather than just throwing something together and sculpting it and being like, here she is and she fits awkwardly in like a male's clothing, you know? Yeah, I, you know, I, I can't really speak to the, you know, the, the, the tech behind, you know, the female character, but I, I have seen uh, some of the female clothes in Engine, mm -hmm. um, you know, just kind of hanging up uh, um, or kind of like, you know, on the fake racks or on the fake mannequins and stuff like that. And the female clothes look awesome. Like, they yeah. look really, really good. Like, the whoever put that together and did all that work, it looks it, it looks really, really fantastic. So it's, uh, it'd be exciting to, to get those integrated into the game because there's already been a lot of care, a lot of thought put into that. So, um, yeah, once those hurdles are over, there there's already a bunch of stuff that's, that's there and ready to, uh, to be populated and help make the world even look look better than it is. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's really important to get those uh, to get those things down. I mean, because really, it's like there's there's one guy, right? There's the bald white dude. Yeah, like that's that's what our character is: bald white male. But we have a variety of characters. What we want to do is we want to find out. Okay, here are the costumes, and then. With man hours, we have to work on this kind of head. We fix this. We find out, okay, well, well maybe we need to tweak this in the, in the texture maps and this kind of stuff. So then all of a sudden, instead of getting like one head that you can choose from a week, why don't we just implement 10 so you have variety? And then when we introduce those 10, why don't we also introduce the female at this time? Um, so it's just, a, it's just a tech and time thing. I mean, there's not, I don't think we're trying to make it racist. Slow and steady. Thing. Just, yeah, just slow and steady. Um, moving on to the next question from Escados. Uh, this is purely lore. So, we're, um, uh, was the outcome of the vote on May third determined by the polls in the articles? What role are those polls playing in determining events in the Persistent Universe, if any, and do they serve a purpose? Uh, now, for those I know, not everyone uh, stays, you know, up to date with the lore. But um, this past uh, uh, on uh, this uh, recent Tuesday, May third, is uh, the official election day in the UEE, and in the uh, weeks and months leading up to that, we've been kind of running a snippets of uh, uh, a campaign that was occurring in uh, the Elysium system, where uh, Suj Cozy, who um, uh, it was the first Tavaran to ever seriously run for. Uh, uh, a Senate position in the UEE. So we were kind of like tracking that over the past few months, dropping hints about it. And over the past month, we, we've kind of gone uh, pretty hard on, on kind of uh, showing everyone kind of like the ins and outs of that race and the different candidates in it. Uh, that included a poll, uh, which was I think a, a few weeks prior. Um, it was just supposed to, it was written in the kind of like, this is a, a poll you would normally send to, to kind of citizens of the world and just asking them their thoughts on a wide variety of questions. Um, and many of you did vote in that, and to be quite honest, much like the, the poll we did on the Polo Initiative a few months ago, uh, we did absolutely take into consideration the way uh, everyone voted, and it's, it's something we, we plan to continue to do and we, we hope to continu uh, continue to do. Uh, we love the participation that, uh, that you guys um, give in, in your responses or in the kind of like uh, role playing that sometimes occurs on the forums or even in the comment thread of the post. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not just something we're, we're doing for, for the sake of doing it. We're actually, we're actually looking at how you respond. We're taking that into consideration. And I, I know some things have even adjusted because of the way you have voted. Um, sometimes we have we have ideas of where we want to take something, but we we see how you vote, and we're like, huh, that's it's interesting to see people concerned about this or, or kind of focused on that or arguing for this, and it's uh, it's definitely it's definitely something we we like to do, and it's definitely something we want to do more because any time we can get um, you coming in and you know um, being a part of this world with us, it just it just makes it a, a better and a richer environment for. Uh, for us to create in, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's the best. That's do. the best part is like talking to everybody and seeing how everybody interacts and kind of making the universe 
live with the actual citizens, you know, and, and the subscribers and everything, uh, ma it makes it fun and it makes it a world. Yeah, because it's, you know, this, this process where it's, it's something where um, no one person is creating this, you know, like it's, uh, we're, we're all a part of this and it, it's, it's, all, it's all bigger than what's immediately at your hands. So uh, you fans are, are, are part of that process. So having your input in, in polls and the votes is, is from a law perspective, just, just extremely valuable and, and, and also on our front. Yeah, and let's not have a Tavarn for president. Well, That's blasphemy. Well, we'll have to see. We'll Has have to, to be see. human. <laughs> Screw those guys. In what way might we be able to portray the physical presence of our characters? With a single skeleton per sex, is there a way to project a large, strong character as well as a smaller, less physical type? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's an interesting question. So let me think about the best way to respond to that. Um, okay, so you have two characters, they're two different heights to have a series and the sets of animations, right? Um, we make a character super big uh, and you're able to make him like really buff and huge. We have to say, okay, what's the benefit of that? Well, you get to have a little bit more variety, but now this character is going to start clipping through a seat that we had in something else, right? Um, or his holster might have to be pushed out or something like that. And then there's some art considerations and time considerations. So uh, do we want to have bigger characters? Yeah, of course. But then, if we start to do uh, much larger characters, what is uh, the downfall and what's the benefit and do they outweigh each other? So what we're doing right now is we're getting a lot of this portrayal through uh, different closings and armor types. Like the heavy armor, I'm sure you guys have seen the concept, maybe if it is out or if it isn't out, I'm sorry, apologize. But it's huge and it's massive and that's a good way to symbolize your presence, right? You want to be... Uh, like really skinny and frail and maybe a quicker character and you want to be able to uh, zip around in combat, you might be someone who wears the light armor with maybe a, a higher end jetpack, right? So there's ways where you'll be able to customize your character. Now talking about scaling up the, the rig and all that kind of stuff, um, it creates a lot of difficulties. So we decided that maybe uh, providing you with uh, better animations would be the best thing to do rather than providing you with less quality of animations but more variation because then they have to be universal and work together universally. Um, once we find, once like we start getting more into the game and seeing how the players work and seeing some of these ships and all this kind of stuff, then maybe like, okay, well, if we do this, we might not have to do that. And then also, all of a sudden, here's this uh, new way, like by using these, these bones to expand our characters, now that Cryonger can take more bones, then maybe that's the best way to expand characters, and we're like, okay, perfect. This will solve our problems. Um, so really, it's, the, it's just time. So right now, we kind of want to nail uh, down what we have right now and get that tech looking good, and I guarantee you it'll be a large amount of variety and uh, personalization into your characters. Um, but on their like most basic physical skeletal level, uh, that's not really the priority right now. I think uh, there'll be enough variation as it is. But down the line, I think uh, when it becomes an issue, then of course we'll address and respond to that issue. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. That's a good answer. Woo! Good answer. I hope so. All right, so we'll go I on to the next one. I was like a stream of consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta let it go. Gotta let it happen. Um, I'm gonna go, uh, it looks like uh, Drug, or Droog. Hey guys, I love the back, uh, background stories and extensive lore you are building. Do you expect we can see some type of origin story like uh, early Messer days in novel format? Given such a huge universe, uh, there must be serious potential for interesting stories. So, um, uh, Sorry, I thought Thomas was flagging us down for something. Nope. He, is, he is just yawning because this is so entertaining. <laughs> You're boring me to death. <laughs> yes, to a certain degree, that we are. Um, we do want to explore um, times in the UEE or in the history of this universe that 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 came prior to the current date of the game. Um, novel format uh, I, that would maybe an ambition way down the road after we have a very entrenched universe and where we have a game that you guys are playing and fully involved with. Is he asking um, to, if we're going to write a novel? 
Yeah, he was. He was wondering if. I mean, yeah, he's he's wondering if we can actually do a novel, and we, we absolutely could. There is yeah. there is there is enough there's enough stuff there, and I think there's enough prime real estate of uh, of events in, in the past that we could go back to and and give a, a fuller treatment for. Um, right now, it, it's 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 far from a focus. Just trying to get the the current uh, world set up. Uh, Squadron. Still got a game going. to do. Exactly. Exactly. Then, now it's like. We like you. To, we want you to make a game, and now I want you to write a novel, make a movie, do this yeah. kind of stuff. But I would read it. Yeah, it's it, and that, that, it's good to know people. People yeah. are into that type of stuff too. It's. Uh, I bet a fan's already wrote one. There has to be like a tome of fan fiction out there. There's, there's some pretty good fan fiction. Yeah, you, there's you know there's stuff on INN. There's even some specific subreddits um, that uh, that focus just on role playing or, or fan fiction and stuff like that. And if you have any interest in, in that, you know uh, you should definitely you should definitely go check those out. You should you should contribute. Um, I know every once in a, a blue moon too. If you if you do like uh, fiction, if you like writing fiction. We sometimes look for, for people interested in writing fiction for us, um, for jump points uh, and things like that. So always keep an eye on our on our website too to see if that pops up. Do you incorporate official fan fi or like fan fiction into the official lore of the game ever? If someone has like a good idea, would you guys ever sit down and be like, I think we should incorporate what this person was talking about because this is pretty dope. Well, uh, it's uh, uh, there. There are lots of really great ideas that definitely pop up on, on fan fiction forums. Um, it, we always need to take it with a step because we know so much more about about the the universe and kind of where we want to go with it and what is kind of planned for it. So sometimes that has to fall in line. A lot of the the fiction in Jump Point uh, that that you read um, has been written by by other authors and and, and fans of the game. Um, I think technically we, we haven't ironed this out for sure like technically we were spinning it as that's fiction that exists in the universe uh, at the time I see. so it, it's not necessarily fiction within fiction yes yeah yeah exactly Inception. Fiction. Fiction. I like that oof it's tough to say yeah, that that's a, that's a, I can't even say it yeah <laughs> um, but no, I think, I think it's really cool we're creating a world that, uh, that uh, has so many different uh, possibilities to it. Um, but, uh, n you know, novels out of it is, is down the road at some point, but um, lots of good fan fiction and, and everything like that is, uh, is already going, so, yeah. Okay, uh, I got a good easy one. Uh, this is from Sloan Warrior. Which piece of clothing have I designed from Star Citizen that I would most like to wear? Well. I haven't designed clothing for Star Citizen. Uh, the clothing was designed by, uh, well, the clothing that I would wear was the Navy pilot flight suit. That, one for Mark Hamill? The one that Mark Hamill wears. Uh, I think that's my favorite so far. Uh, it was designed by Rob McKinnon and Jeremiah Lee. I did concept the helmet. I guess I was, con I was a concept artist when I did the helmet for that. But it's mostly, it's mo mostly Rob and Jeremiah's design. Um, but I built the clothes and put it into the game, so. And you also worked on the, the new flight suit, right? No. No, you didn't sculpt that? You didn't, you didn't create that at all? Nope. No? no? You're just taking all the credit for it? The which flight suit? The, like the newest, newest ones. No, the newest, newest flight suits, uh, we will have the, no, the newest, newest flight suits, I, didn't, I haven't touched. This is the Navy pilot I flight see. suit. Okay. It's the one that Mark Hamill wears with the tubes and some cool stuff and some like dope lights in the helmet. Um, it looks badass. Um, and I like like the jetpack that was designed for it. I think it looks cool. Um, but this new, the RSI flight suit yes. that's uh, coming out, uh, that was sculpted uh, previously, and, uh, but not, not by me. Um, okay. I know uh, Shane Hessler has worked on it. Uh, Michael Hawes has worked on it. Uh, Forest has worked on it. It's been it a. It looks it's, awesome, and I walked by. Effort. I walked by his uh, computer one day, and it was up on his computer, and he was kind of looking at it, and I thought he was doing some work on it. So oh, I, oh, I just gave you I go, credit. We've all worked yeah. a little bit on it. It's like a legacy asset that's been re revamped yeah. with our new character system to work because we like the design of it and we think it looks cool. Well, that counts. I mean, it, it's the same thing. Like everything I write, Dave and Will take passes on and do work on too. It's all, it's always team efforts around here. So uh, go team. All, all the things you created. In that sense, I, I had wear that flight suit. That new flight suit's pretty awesome. The RSI oh. one, so. Thank you, as a what am I? What am I? Uh, ambassador of the character team. That that works. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Dope. All right, so let's go back to another lore per, uh, post from Kevon. 
Hey guys, in the new lore post, uh, Far From Home, Old Jagger reports about a weapon delivery from the local police forces. Now my question is, will we be able to support local groups on planets, e.g. police or maybe a syndicate, with weapons or other stuff to change their influence on the planet? Whoa. Um, that is that is a hope. That it, that is an absolute hope that um, some of the missions and some of the systems that'll be built in will be able to run supplies, whether that be food You're confirming this right now? or <laughs> uh, or guns or stuff like that, to specific locations that might be in need, or maybe specific um, groups at a location that could use it use it to, to their benefit. Uh, I, I know that's the the long term goal is that you'll be able to um, kind of. Uh, you know, as, as stuff comes on in, like any economy, we can see where stuff's going and how that may tip the scales or the balance uh, slightly. Uh, how that exactly works down is definitely way more of a design, uh, design question. But I know uh, us from a lore perspective are trying to make sure the landing zones are gonna be populated with interesting NPCs that have perspectives, that have allegiances, some which may be very apparent, um, some which may not be apparent. It could be pretty cool. Oh, you're talking about a little twist, a little yeah, twist like, action like, like in maybe there? you're hired to do a job only to realize that what you're doing the job for wasn't necessarily what you told it was for, and it may it may go against the interest you thought you were working for. So I think being able to to work stuff like that in or thinking about that is. Uh, um, is something we're already starting to do, um, and that from our end, you know, starts by creating interesting planets where there are there is tension, where there is stuff going on that you can you can be a part of, and then populating that with people, uh, NPCs that you'll eventually meet, um, and can kind of uh, lead you down a path one way or the other. So, yeah, hope hopefully, um, you know, how you guys interact with the world will uh, be you know help dynamically change it in some way, shape, or form. Well, I hope that's uh, hope that works out because that sounds awesome. It should be pretty fun. Okay. Next question is by Traz Ion of Ion Industries. Uh, we've been told that the depth of the character builder will be iterative, starting from just a few facial choices to eventually having a more robust builder. A first-person perspective game usually places a lot of value on the identity itself, and so blah blah blah. Uh, the character builder will be extremely important. I agree, it should be extremely important. Uh, what plans hope you foresee in the longer term uh, intentions with the speed builder? Um, so, customizing your face and the ever-growing technology. I think in the very beginning, uh, probably in the alpha uh, phase, once you start to choose it, you'll probably just choose between a variation of heads. Um, after that, I believe that it's going to be kind of, we're choosing heads, we're starting to start, uh, maybe move some of the geometry around, creating a more customized face. Uh, there's a lot of potential for uh, major customizations since our characters share the same uh, topology and the same UV space. We've actually done a few tests in here which turn out to make these like horrible monsters but sometimes hilariously funny and decent looking characters by taking the texture of one character that was scanned, putting it on like like we'll take Gary Oldman's face and we'll put it on like uh, Webster's, uh, the female head, and it's just these crazy amalgamations of characters. Uh, it's fun, but I think we're starting to realize like the tech that we have, we're gonna be able to create quite a lot of variety, maybe quicker than we originally expected, uh, especially by reusing a lot of the maps and maybe start to adjust with like uh, skin tone and customization of hair and eyes and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think at first it's definitely going to start simple, but like the rest of our game, it's, it grows over time. So uh, we definitely have goals to make it extremely customizable uh, and much, much different, and then easily implementable in the in the future. Like that sounds awesome. I I, I, yeah. I know I've seen some of these some of these missteps are just kind of like. Uh, you know, weird faces or eyebrows that have like mouths on them and, and all that fun stuff. And oh, I, I've, yeah, yeah. I've had a few nightmares based on some of the images from them messing around with the, the characters and trying different things or things just kind of like getting buggy. So it's, uh, it can be pretty entertaining, but I've definitely walked by a few desks and almost spilled my coffee when I've seen <laughs> what's on the screen. A few so. people are actually putting together like a page of all the terrible things that have happened. Yep. Like when they like repassed uh, someone's tongue 
onto uh, Gary Oldman's face. So it was, it, was his, it was his shape of his face, but just a really nice detailed tongue texture going up the side with like teeth. And we're like, what the heck is happening? <laughs> it looked like burned flesh. And I was like, oh um, my that's gosh. That's what it was. I've, I've, I've seen that page. It's, it's, it's crazy. Oh, you've seen the page? Yeah, it's, I think it's The Things We Have Seen. <laughs> the like that is the title of the pain. Seen. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, especially when animation, like it's crazy or something's not done properly. And then all of a sudden someone's face just like shoots out the side and you're like, whoa. This is interesting. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so I, I believe we're on to the last one. Uh, this one's got two quick questions, which, uh, which I'll just touch on from uh, a lore perspective uh, very briefly. Um, Perry Hope asks, will you integrate the alien languages in lore posts, and how will you do that? And also, uh, when will the Galactopedia go online? So uh, these, these are two um, uh, long-term uh, projects that, that are both kind of uh, uh, um, being worked on right now. Uh, alien languages are, are being developed or they're being used for Squadron 42. Um, they're um, being developed for, for the other races at, at the moment also. Um, so I, I'm, I actually believe, I'm not quite sure how we'll handle um, that at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm sure some of that will slip into lore posts, but again, you don't want to make any kind of like lore posts so alien language heavy that it's going to turn somebody off, that it's going to make it too difficult to read, or somebody new to the game is going to be like, what are they even talking about? So right. th there's a way of finding a right balance. And part of that balance might actually be integrating it into the Galactopedia, which, uh, which we are working on. We're starting to um, I, I know uh, uh, Sherry's going through, especially the, the star map, and pulling out a lot of the keywords that you find in our li little descriptions of all the planets and the systems on the key map, um, so that uh, we make sure, like, pretty, you know, uh, we'll, we'll be able to have direct links for uh, those places and those those terms to kind of like help uh, help organize all this information that that this game creates because. I, I know the lore can be a lot to jump into because there, there's so much going on and there's so much that's been written, but uh, um, it's the same thing whether it's art assets or, or clothing or all those different things. Uh, it's, uh, there's just so much information going on that uh, it's, it, it, can, it can feel overwhelming. Um, we've got some good uh, kind of like things in place at the moment and uh, the Galactopedia is, is going to probably be an iter like many things in this game, an iterative process where we start, we, 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 give, uh, we give the basic of stuff, the basis of a handful of things and then just uh, build from there because uh, yeah, again, there, there's just so much going on and, and it's, uh, it's, it's actually, it's just easier to, to start small and do it right and do it well, yeah. and then just just keep uh, kind of like building and building further from there. So uh, it's got to be pretty awesome though, like building a universe. You ever just like sit there being like, I'm in total control. <laughs> well, actually, uh, Chris is in total to uh, total control, and uh, Dave before right. that is in total, total control yes. too. Um, but it, it, it is it is fun to, to be able to, to sit back. And well, you guys get to, I mean, for like smaller stuff too, I mean, everyone has kind of a say in, uh, I mean, it's a collaborative effort, right? Oh, yeah. You guys absolutely. are building a universe. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I've That's created cool. so many names for this game, and it's just like, <laughs> it's to the point where I, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I, I try to drop reference. At a certain point, you just need a name, and you just need to keep moving, because right. that's, that's the least of your problems. You know, mm -hmm. like, name, names are the easy thing, and it, you can do winks here and there, but at a certain point, you just, you just want to get stuff down, and right. it's like, that's the easy thing, and you've got you to move on, and you've got you to gotta get to the more interesting thing, or you've got to do this, or do this twist, or that turn. You've got to name so. every comet in the solar system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. If not us, somebody will do it for us. So, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. I mean, that star map thing is amazing. That's, That's so cool. Fun. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and the guys, uh, the uh, um, Herbilling guys that helped build the star map with us, we've, already, we've been talking with them about the Galactopedia. They're, they're super excited to, to get that going. So um, yeah, it's, it's sounding pretty fun. It's going to be, gonna be, gonna be pretty cool, I think. Um, so I think that's nice. about it. Do you, have, do you have anything else you want to get off your chest, Omar? Any other confessions? And confessions? Oh, oh. no. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I'm uh, trying to bait you into something there, and you didn't, you didn't, you didn't go for it. But wait, why? What am I supposed, what am I supposed to do now? You, nothing. No, you, you don't have Did to Did you want me just someone. to admit my deepest, darkest <laughs> secret? <laughs> that's where I was hoping it was going to be. Mom, I have something to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we why don't you tell you your deepest, enough. darkest secret? <sighs> Let's just make it fun. <laughs> yeah. Um... Thank you very much for sticking through this with us. Yeah, thank um, you guys. This is Omar. Yep. 
this is Adam. Uh, thank you to all the subscribers for, for supporting uh, the game and supporting shows like this. We can try to give you a little bit of behind the scenes and some details behind it. And to, to all the viewers out there, uh, thanks for tuning in, sticking to the thank end. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. See you later. See you on the verse. Hey guys, thanks for watching um, Ten for the Chairman. Uh, if you guys would like to uh, see more episodes, go here. If you guys would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel and always keep up to date with all our video content, go here. And uh, if you guys would like to watch episodes of Around the Verse, go here, please. And I will see you in the verse.